Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Stephanie with Lumeria Star. And today what we're going to do is uh, take a look at my decks I used for February for my uh, monthly tarot edit, the Lumeria Star tarot edit uh, hashtag. Basically, you get to choose what decks you're using for the month. Um, it's I kind of created this hashtag a couple of years ago just as a way for me to like make sure I'm using all my decks because I have so many. Um, so it's just been really a fun thing for me to continue. And I kind of moved it over to YouTube so I can kind of reflect on the decks I used, uh, what worked, what didn't, and um, yeah, and I can share that with you all. So let's just get into uh, the decks I used for um, my tarot edit for February uh, 2023. So for 2023, my tarot practice, I did say I wanted to, first of all, this is a no buy year for me. So the goal is to not buy any decks uh, this year and to also enjoy the decks I have, which means I'm going to be doing a um, one deep dive a month of really intentionally spending time with the deck. So for February, that was my Lioness Oracle. Um, this deck, I've had such an interesting relationship with this deck in that I have really always been drawn to it. Like it just feels like a very Leo energy deck which is why I got it. Actually, I think my mom got it for me for my birthday a couple like years ago. Um, so in theory, I should love it. And, and the artwork is really cool. I love the collage work. It reminds me of like being a teenager and doing a lot of like collage art. But for some reason, me using this deck was just like not connecting. There, there just felt like a very big disconnect. So I've, you know, thought about rehoming it. I've thought about trading it. I've, I think I've even put it up for sale and it just stays with me. So I'm like, okay, maybe this means I need to, there's something still for me here. So, um, for February, I decided this was going to be my deep dive, uh, deck for the month. And I think because I forced myself to spend time with this deck, I I did finally make a connection with it and I think what the the key piece for me is is that with this deck it just kind of goes its own way which I think that's why I struggled with it like it's not super Rider Waite Smith based which is you know the the system I primarily read with like a lot of the images off the bat don't make sense to me like seven of cups this feels very random um some of these like you know I could kind of get that with the four of swords but a lot of the imagery just doesn't make sense with what I know to be my meanings so I think that was a big reason why I just couldn't connect with this deck but anyway <clears throat> I finally just let this deck be what it wants to be kind of taking it for kind of face value just like okay like you be you and like let me just enjoy you for what you are like practicing acceptance like I'm like okay this deck is whatever this deck wants to be and can I enjoy its presence and I think when I was able to finally make that mental shift I really started to enjoy this deck a lot just simply for what it was. I think I was reading it maybe a little more intuitively. I was kind of just going off the imagery as a, as opposed to like what maybe I necessarily think it means. Um, sometimes I would combine both, but I've also noticed I just like to pull maybe three cards max with this because the collage work sometimes can get a little busy. I, I enjoyed pulling only a few and just sitting with that so needless to say i'm really really glad i chose to do the deep dive with this and i feel like i finally reached a place where like we have this mutual respect for each other now like is this my favorite deck in the world like no i have other decks that i connect with so much deeper but like this deck is staying now i appreciate her for what she is um 
I enjoy her quirkiness. I enjoy her messiness. Um, yeah, I just, I just appreciate her now. So I am really excited about that. And look, we're leaving, we're ending on my, um, card of the year so that was really cool so i just i'm really glad i finally have been able to make a connection with this deck and um yeah i think this is definitely a keeper now i don't think this is going to go on and off my like should this be rehomed list so that is the lioness oracle this is by um alejandra leone of the lioness oracle so this was so much fun to work with all right so now I want to go through a couple decks that I just didn't use that much. Um, this month, the She-Wolf Tarot, I just, I didn't pull for, um, I didn't reach for it very often. Um, that's not to say I don't love this deck, I do. This is the first, very first edition of the She-Wolf. Um, it's a great deck. It also kind of goes its own way, like it's a little, it's got some Thoth influence, but and this is probably still one of my favorite decks, but I just, I wasn't called to really grab for it this month. And I think that's fine. It just is what it is. I think maybe because I was enjoying some other decks, this one maybe got a little bit neglected this month, but that's okay. Um, I don't foresee this deck ever being one that I rehome. I think this is definitely a forever deck in my collection. It was one of the first decks I ever owned, so it does feel like it has some nostalgia for me. Like when I was first learning tarot, this deck felt really, um, what's the word? Like it felt very advanced for me when I picked up the tarot, but like I knew the artwork spoke to me. So I was just like, okay, like you're here. I'm going to connect with you later, but like you feel important in some way. Um, I really hate this card, by the way. The Seven of Cups, I always feel like it's upside down, but like I just, I really, I just like that card. Anyway, um, beautiful deck. I just really didn't use it that much and that's totally, totally okay. But it's a great deck, highly suggest, highly suggest. So that is my She-Wolf Tarot. This is the very first edition and this is by um Devony Wolf of Serpent Fire. Um okay another deck I didn't use all that much was the Rainbow Heart Tarot. Um this is also I believe a first edition. I believe the editions now have a holographic edging. Mine didn't so I like edged it in like this bubblegum pink which I really like I actually prefer that over a holographic edging um so this deck is super fun I also realize this does come in like a smaller travel size and I think the reason I don't use this a lot is because I in general don't tend to use like oracle size tarot decks like I mean let me rephrase that I use them but like if I have a choice between this and a tarot size I will like 95 percent of the time pull for the tarot size deck. So I realize this comes in a like travel smaller size. So I'm like, ooh, should I just like get that and then maybe rehome this one? Because maybe that's why I'm not using it a lot. Because in theory, I really love the artwork, but I'm just like, why don't I, why don't I grab this deck? Um, I think it's the size. I really prefer smaller cards in my hands. It's easier for me to shuffle, it's easier for me to handle. Um, I tend to bond with decks more when they're like traveling decks, like my tarot in, in tins, I love because they, they go with me a lot of places. I've taken them hiking, I take them to the beach, I've taken them overseas when I travel, like anywhere, they've been on airplanes. So these bigger decks tend to just stay home. So I might actually I can't, I can't buy it this year because I'm in my no-buy, but um, maybe in the future I might look into getting the mini and then possibly rehoming this one. Yeah. I think that's what I'll do. Oh my gosh, this is one of my favorite moon cards. Like, how awesome. 
How awesome. All right, so that is the Rainbow Heart Tarot. Oops. And this is by, what's the, her name? Rachel Rosen, Rosencoder, Rosencoder. Oops, upside down. Okay. Um, let's see. Another Oracle deck I didn't use too, too much uh, in February is the Vessel Oracle. Um, I love this deck, though. This one is not going anywhere. I believe, I want to say it's out of print. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, this is just a really fun deck. I did edge this in like a metallic pink. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, it's really great. It's like a very self-love, self-care deck. The artwork is that like, like very imperfect type of artwork. Um, but the keywords are great. This deck is really versatile. I feel like it can work with a lot of different decks. Um, this isn't going anywhere, but again, I just wasn't super drawn to it this month because I had other primary decks that I was using um, just, just a lot. But this is going nowhere. This is one of my favorites. This will be staying. This is by, who's this by? Spirit, it's a Spirit Speak Oracle deck and that's by Mary Elizabeth Evans. Just really great keywords. And like I said, it pairs nicely with a lot of different decks. So that is the Vessel Oracle. And again, with all the hearts, it's so perfect for the February edit for Love Month. So that's a great deck. Um, another deck that I always, always, always love working with is my Sledis Tarot. I want to say, is this the first edition too? I'm not sure. Um, love these backs. They're so fun. I edge these myself in a matte black. I think that makes it look really sleek. Um, this deck is just so much fun. It's so sex positive, clearly. I feel like it has a really good self-love, self-worth kind of spin to it. Um, it's got all different types of diversity. We've got trans people. We have all different types of bodies, which I think is really great different skin colors, um, just normalizing just sex and sexual expression in all its forms. So it feels like a very non-judgmental, very curious deck, which I love. Um, I do love how in this deck, a lot of the, not a lot of them, but a few of the majors are renamed. So the Fool is the Maiden. Let's see what else is renamed. I can find them. Uh, the Hierophant is the mother. I really like that renaming a lot. Uh, the Magician is the witch. That's so good. Let's see if I can find the others. I just love this artwork too. It's very, it's got that very imperfect feel to it. Oh, I love this. The Empress is the whore. Like how good, how good. This is the Chariot is experience. Um, the Emperor is power, which is great. Let's see if there's any more that have been renamed. Uh, the Hermit is the Crone, so perfect. So we do have Maiden Mother Crone in this deck, which I love. The Hanged Man is Suspension, so good with the, the pole here. David Bowie references. I feel like a lot of tarot decks. Sidebar, did you all notice? And I love David Bowie. Um, but there's just so many David Bowie references in tarot. Like I can literally think of like three decks off the top of my head that I have that are like random Bowie references. And another one is um, Lioness Oracle, which we looked at. He's the star and then Prince of Wands in here. And then I believe my Tarot de Carla types has Bowie as the magician. So I guess, I don't know, definitely a connection between Bowie and tarot art. Also, can we look at this Wheel of Fortune? <laughs> so good, 
so, so good. Um, so this is just a joy every time I, I take out my beloved sluts to come out and play for wonderful self-love, self-worth um, readings. So this was a win. Just, I always love working with that deck. Okay, so another deck that I always, always love working with is the Moon Boy Tarot. This one's the third edition, the uh, with pink, the pink color. I also have the first edition, which is just black and white. This is probably one of my favorite decks ever. I love everything about this deck. This deck to me feels like a soul deck. It feels like it just gets me. I love how it's modern. I also love, um, well, one, I love that it follows one character and it's, it's really the creator, Stephanie Capone, but like, I also have like long, dark hair, sometimes wear glasses. So I feel like I can see myself in this character, but, and this also looks like my cat growing up. And that's actually how I connected with her in a spirit reading, a spirit guide reading. Um, so that feels special too. But um, another thing that really shines with this deck for me, the guidebook. The guidebook is so good. Um, whenever I use this deck, I will always read from the guidebook, even though obviously I can read intuitively, but I just love Stephanie's writing. She always gives me a little something to like consider in a way that maybe I wouldn't have considered. And I, I just appreciate her perspective on things. So her guidebook is probably one of my, my top tarot guidebooks ever. So this deck is a favorite. It's probably always going to be a favorite. It feels like home to me. It feels like a Steph deck, a Steph aesthetic. I just love everything about this deck. And of course I use it for February just because, you know, love month I tend to take out all my my pink and pretty decks this one's pink it's got a lot of beautiful roses in it I love this heart-shaped bathtub I love this hierophant too like the crystal ball I think that's really great there's a couple extra um like oracle cards I keep in here so that was what black black diamond we've got rose quartz we also have the planchette this hanged one is beautiful. I love that so much. Um, the lovers, I really enjoy this with like, you know, connecting on, with all of our chakras. That feels really resonant. This double card's really good. This eight of wand or eight of um, swords is like definitely how I feel when I'm in eight of swords energy. I'm just like stuck in my own shit, which is totally my. I call it my like stalker shadow card. Like it is literally my Achilles heel, that eight of swords energy. But anyway, uh, this is one of my favorite decks, always a win. This is the Moon Boy Tarot by Stephanie Capone. And this is the third edition. So along with that, I was actually pairing it this month with the Rose Oracle. So this is by Rebecca Campbell and this is artwork by Katie Louise. So I guess she's no longer doing like the illustrative work with Danielle Noel. I guess Danielle Noel is kind of doing her own decks, um, Oracle decks, which is cool. But I figured I would try this out and I actually really, really enjoy this. Um, as much as I love Danielle Noel's artwork, I feel like the, the star seed, the very cosmic energy isn't quite resonating with me as much anymore. It definitely resonated with me in the beginning when I was kind of starting my spiritual journey and just discovering a lot about myself. Um, but now I'm really getting drawn to more just, just grounded energy. So I love how this deck in general is based around the rose, which obviously is a very earthly um, concept of a rose. So it just feels, this deck feels more grounding. It just feels more earthy. I mean, this, I pulled this card a couple times in February. February is a pretty tough month for me this month, just with things going on. So I feel like I was totally in like a wasteland energy. So that card came up a lot for me. 
But this deck is a really great deck for journaling. Um, it's mass market. If you don't have it and you're even like remotely drawn to the artwork, I, I suggest checking it out. I really enjoy just pulling like one card sitting with the image, you know, reading the um, keywords, and then definitely diving into the guidebook. And I think the guidebook has a lot of really great, um, just a lot of great information for like jumping off points for journaling. I think I also have one of the cards on my altar right now too. plant yourself here like it just feels very grounded um which is an energy I'm really trying to harness right now is getting myself grounded not so much in the cosmic spacey galactic energy but just really rooting down into the earth so this is a lovely one and this pairs really nicely with um, the moon void tarot just with the color the aesthetic um so that was really fun to work with okay so let me show the stars of this month and what I really became obsessed with. And these are the two, these are the few decks that I feel like I use the most. So this is the Reclaim Oracle, which I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with. This came out, um, I think this came out in 2020 and I actually bought it. I want to say 2021. Um, but I left it in the plastic. I was just like, I'm not ready for this deck. I don't know if any of you all do that too. Like I'll buy decks and just be like, I know I need to use this. I know I need to work with it, but not yet. So I let this literally sit in the plastic packaging until this month. I was just like, this is the month I'm ready for this deck. Um, and did this just blow my expectations away. It is so good. And rightfully so. I know a lot of people talk about it. Um, first of all, I love the size of it. It is smaller. So again, it feels really nice in my hands. These backs are beautiful. It's got that soft velvety rose petal touch, black matte edging. It's not the shiny gilding, which I don't like. Um, these messages, like holy shit. So there, this is so good for healing work, shadow work processing trauma if you have some healing wounds this deck is not for the faint of heart and you really need to be in what is this the smudge here you really need to be um, in the proper headspace to work with this so this is really not one I would ever use for clients um, unless they ask for it. Like this is, this is just for me. And I've been doing a lot of healing work myself. And this is a really nice, um, what's the word I'm looking for? This is a really nice supplement to therapy. You know, I think this goes without saying, but I am going to say it. Um, none of your decks should be a replacement for therapy. I think everyone should have a therapist and I'm not saying that just because I'm a counselor and a mental health coach. Um, I, I just really believe that a lot of us have things we've not processed and a lot of us who grew up in spaces where there was no space to process that. We were taught to shove things down and because our parents and caregivers didn't know any better right and they don't disappear when you do that emotions are energy and energy can't disappear it has to go somewhere so if we don't unlock and process the the energetics of our emotions they will show up in other places in our lives whether it's dysfunction, whether it's maladaptive coping skills, whether it's actual physical health issues, because emotions will, when repressed, will start to eat away at your body from the inside out. And that is, we have science to back that. So let me get, not get too deep here. But anyway, Oracle decks are not a 
substitute for therapy, but if you're already in therapy and you want a really, really amazing tool to use alongside of it, the, Rec the Reclaim deck is it. This deck is it. It's got a lot of shadowy keywords. I mean, sadness. Um, let me find some of the, the heavier ones. Loss. I don't know, just one of these cards can really, oh, it just moves me. Shame. Ooh, rage. Insecurity unworthiness like I get chills like reading these contempt envy frustration so like I've been just using this as an oracle um but it would be really cool too to like I could see myself using this deck and like pulling out a card so let's say I've been feeling really discouraged I could purposely pull this out as kind of like my significator card and then pull a few tarot on how to work through my feelings of discouragement. Or let's say, um, hmm. let's just pull a random card. I feel like shuffling this deck. This deck is gonna stay out for me all year. This is not a deck that will be going away. All right, so let's just pull a random card. Boredom. So let's say we've just been feeling really bored and stagnant and apathetic, and we wanna know how to like get ourselves out of that space. I would maybe pull like two or three cards of maybe what's creating the feeling of boredom, um, like an actionable thing I can do to get myself out of boredom. And perhaps even, I don't know, I'm trying to think, um, what is boredom trying to tell me? And I feel like that would be such a beautiful journal prompt. Like I could probably get pages out of that. So I think this deck is just so deep and so good. So that's the Reclaim Oracle. And actually, uh, the deck I was pairing it with that literally felt like little sis like sisters working together this is the Black Violet Tarot. This is the Cherry Blossom Edition. So the Cherry Blossom Edition is just add, added pops of like this Cherry Blossom Pink. The original Black Violet is just black and white. And not only do these decks aesthetically look great together, but like they have the same color palette, but the creator of this deck, um, Heidi Phelps, uh, she also created this deck with the intention of healing and grief and loss. And I think her story was she was creating this deck as her mother, uh, I guess her mother had, I believe she had cancer. Uh, yeah, she lost her mother to cancer while being pregnant, you know, having her own baby. So she was experiencing probably so many mixed emotions of both like grief and loss and sadness, but also you know, excitement of having her own child. And I can imagine that being so challenging. So she created this deck in, in that space to honor all of that. So this deck has all the healing vibes in it. It's a very healing deck and it's also a witchy deck too. So that really appeals to me. So I paired this with Reclaim and I think it's a match made in absolute heaven maybe i'll show you let's let's do a little let's do a little reading so let's say let's pull a card from reclaim okay so we have pulled worry so maybe maybe you pulled this or maybe you selected it let's say you've been feeling just overall really worried about a lot of things you notice a lot on your mind and also can we just look at the artwork 
Like that definitely feels like worry. So let's see. Let's pull some cards. Let's maybe let's create some positions. So let's say um, let me have some more clarity just on worry in general. So Ten of Cups. So Ten of Cups to me is that like happily ever after card, that emotional fulfillment. Perhaps we're worried that we won't have that. Or perhaps we're worried, you know, what we did create in regards to that is not what we've been looking for or it's not creating that sense of fulfillment. And that's causing us a lot of pain and unnecessary suffering. So what is uh, a block for me in in kind of staying or a block for me getting out of that worry? Like clearly I'm feeling stuck in it. So what's a block? So let's see here. The six of wands. I think the major block here is like we don't feel like there's we're going to be successful at this. Like it's almost a sense of no matter what changes we make, like what's the point? Like I'm not going to be, this isn't going to end up victorious for me. This isn't going to be successful for me. So it's like we're stuck in this worry. And what is the worry here to teach me? Hmm. So this worry is literally keeping us stuck. And perhaps as a teacher, it's saying, okay, if you want to worry, this, this is the space you're in. Is this where you'd like to stay? And if you don't want to stay here, maybe you can challenge that worry because this worry is not serving you. And I just felt the need to pull a clar clarifying card and we've got the sun here. So if we're able to challenge a lot of those worry thoughts, we can actually get to a place where we're really enjoying life. And I just feel like personally, <laughs> I have been so called out by this reading. It's actually rude. Rude. Called out, called out on video. All right. I hope that message resonated for someone else other than me because it certainly resonated for me. Um, so anyway, yeah, the Black Violet Tarot and the Reclaim Oracle are literally match made in heaven. These are going to be out on my desk probably for quite a while because I'm in a very healing space at the moment. And uh, those decks are amazing. So let's just take a look at everything that I've worked with for February's Tarot Edit. And yeah, everything pretty much was a win. I loved getting to really know my lioness oracle tarot it was a great choice for my deep dive and yeah i hope you all enjoyed this video let me know in the comments down below what you think of some of these decks and give us a like if you're new here i'd love for you to subscribe to my channel for more creative tarot content and i will see you all in the next video take care everyone Bye.